So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make offset text, just like you see right here. And also, as you might be able to see, this is also still fully live. So if I type and change it, you can do that. And the effect is maintained, which is a really cool bonus of how we're going to do this. So first up here, the font that I am using in this tutorial is called Archivo Black. It's a totally free font. I will link that font in the description of this video in case you want to match what I'm doing exactly, but this will work with absolutely any font. So feel free to play around and see what works best for you. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to type out your text. So you can do that right now. And also you'll want your properties window open. And I'll just use that as a way of showing some other cool stuff you can do really easily using the properties window. If you don't see the properties window on your screen, if you go to the window menu at the top and then go to properties about three quarters of the way down, if you don't see a check mark next to properties, just click it and hopefully the window will show up. So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do once you have your text typed out is using the black arrow to click on the text so it's highlighted. So once you've selected your text, what I like to do then is to go over to the toolbar on the left-hand side and make sure your fill is in the front. It'll be a solid black box, probably black. It might be a different color. Just click that so it's in the front. And then to the lower right of that in the little submenu here, there's a box that will say none. And if you click that, it'll totally remove the fill. So just make sure you don't unselect your type so you lose it. But I like to do this because with the next step, if you don't do it this way, it can make a faint outline sometimes that I don't like. So I just remove the fill from this initial step. So once you have your type selected in the properties window that we had before, there should be appearance up at the front. So you'll see fill, stroke, opacity. But the important thing is in the lower right hand corner, there's a three dot menu, which you can click to open the appearance window or panel. So I'll click that, but mine was already opened right here. But the appearance window is what we'll be using. Alternatively, you can go to window and then appearance, and it'll also make it show up. I just use the properties window because it's a quick and easy way to access stuff if you always have it open. But the first thing we want to do here is in the appearance window, there is a box in the lower left that will say add a new stroke, and then also one that will say add a new fill. We're going to start by adding a new fill, which is going to bring back the text in black in this case. But this time we can modify the color right from this fill window. So I'm going to click on the black area next to fill to change the color. And that'll bring up a bunch of different swatches. And if you highlight over a swatch and just hold it there, it'll tell you what the color is. So for this particular tutorial video, I will say if you want to recreate this particular style, you want to hover over on the cyan. It'll say CMYK cyan and then click that, which will give us our very first color. So next up here, what I'm going to do is actually create a second fill and we'll use that fill to create the offset type. So I'm going to click that box again to create a new fill. And if I go down in the appearance window or even make this a little bit bigger, you can see that there's now two fills here. So I'm going to select the one that's on the top and then click on that color box again. And this time I'm going to change it to CMYK magenta. So I'll click that. And now we have the magenta here as well. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this more easily. So now comes the fun part where we can do the offset. So with the fill on the top selected, you want to click the FX button in the appearance window for add a new effect. And from that, you want to go to distort and transform. And from distort and transform, you want to click on transform, which should be right in the middle. So that'll bring up this transform effect window and make sure you check the preview box in the lower left hand panel. At least for me, it's always unchecked when you open it. So do that before you do this next step where you won't see what's happening. And also under rotate, make sure the angle is set to zero degrees. Otherwise this will have a very different effect, which maybe is what you're looking for, but we're going to keep this at zero right now. The important thing to do here is the move panel. So if I move the horizontal to something like five points, and then I'll just, I type that in and I'll click on the vertical. So it does that. You can see that that moves the type or the second fill that was on top of the other fill. And then if I change the vertical to be something like five point, it'll move that down by five points. So you can move these either positive or negative to create the overlapping effect that we're going for. In the examples above, I believe I had negative five point in the horizontal and then negative five point in the vertical. 
So I'm just going to do that again to repeat the effect I have above, but feel free to adjust this however you see fit. And obviously these numbers will be a lot different depending on how big your text is because you are moving it a set number of points and not a percentage of movement. And just as a fun thing you can do, if you did want to rotate this type basically to flip it, you could type 180 in angle and then just click off of it and you'll see it does exactly that. So there are other things that you can do in the transform tool, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to really cover all of that funky stuff, but it is there for you to play around with at a later time. So I'm going to hit OK to remove this. And that's pretty much it as far as creating an offset type. It's really quick and easy to do, but also you'll see what I have here does not look like what I have above. To recreate that sort of screen print style, you can also do that very quickly and easily in the appearance window. So in this case, if you go to opacity, it's right now set to normal in the blending mode, which is in the upper left hand corner. If I change that to multiply, it's going to recreate that kind of cool screen print style over overlay effect, which goes really well with the offset effect, which also looks a lot like a screen print misregistration, where if you're screen printing and the screens are just a little bit off, it creates this cool offset look. And also, if you want to recreate the example I have above, where in this case, the offset is uh, outline of the type, which is much more common of an actual accident that would happen in screen printing, I can very quickly and easily show you how to do that as well. So in the appearance window at the top, there should be a stroke area where you can modify that. And if you don't see this, you can just hit the box in the lower left hand corner that says add a new stroke. In this case, I'm going to change it from no fill, which is the white box with the red diagonal line. And I'm going to add in the CMYK magenta color. So that'll go ahead and do that. And also what I'm going to do very quickly is because we have the appearance window open and there's the fill that has this transform that we just did, if I hold alt and if you're using a Mac, you want to hold option and then click and hold the transform and drag it right on top of this stroke, it'll actually do that exact same effect. It'll copy that over. And if I want to hide the fill that we did before so you can't see it, I'll just select that fill and then click on the eyeball icon, which will remove the visibility. So now we have our new stroke with the exact same offset effect that we had before. And that was really fast and easy to do inside the appearance window. But of course you can see that this doesn't have quite the same stroke width as this top example. And it also doesn't have that kind of cool screen print style multiply effect applied, but the same steps apply as what we did before. So this time in the stroke section of the appearance window, I'm gonna hit opacity. And once again, we're going to move this down to multiply. And I'm also going to click on the actual stroke and then just increase the points of the stroke to something bigger. I think three point is what I did before. So there you have it. A really quick and easy way to make a cool offset type effect. And if you click the text and then you want to change, for example, if I want this to be offset a little bit more, I can hit that transform. I can make this something like negative seven by negative seven. And once I hit preview, which is always unchecked and I forgot to recheck, you can see that move take place in real time. And if I want to hide the transform entirely, I can also hit the eyeball, hide it. So in this case, you just see the text stacked on top of each other. So as you can see, this is fast. This is easy. This is also easy to modify and change at a later point in time. And it totally saved the ability to edit that type. So it was really easy just to change it to say something else. So I do hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you can see stuff like this in the future and also hit the like button to let me know that you liked the video. But past that, if you have any additional questions or comments, feel free to add them to the comment section. Maybe I can help you. Maybe someone else can help you or just answer whatever it is you're thinking about. But that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.